Hello everyone! It's a good thing it's Sunday, because a game like this should not be viewed uh, during the week. Uh, for a game like this you want to be as rested as possible. Uh, it's a game from round 10 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament, and as we've seen in uh, the previous video, uh, where Gelfand uh, had that beautiful victory against Levon Aronian, uh, these are the standings after round 9. So Carlsen has 6 points, he has sole first place, and Boris Gelfand is all the way up to 4.5 points. So he has a very nice chance here. If he beats Magnus Carlsen, he can join, well, somewhat to join the leaders and gain five and a half points. And uh, before we see the actual game, we do have a couple of photos from this round. Uh, here, as usual, uh, you have a nice photo of a bunch of photographers taking a photo of Magnus Carlsen. Uh, quite, a, quite a popular guy, <laughs> even before he became world champion. Uh, here we have a nice close-up of Magnus Carlsen. It's, uh, it's like he's saying, could you please take photos of someone else, please? Uh, then we have uh, a nice photo of Gelfand, he just arrived at the board with a, with a glass of water in one hand and a handshake in the other. And uh, here we have uh, a photo of the two of them, uh, they just uh, started playing, Gelfand of course played c5, the Sicilian to Carlsen z4, and he's trying to, to achieve eye contact to maybe, to maybe scare off his younger opponent. And in the back you can see Peter Dodgers uh, doing the one-handed photo. Very nice. So, uh, let's see this game. Uh, like we said, uh, Gelfand doing nice in this tournament, uh, already two wins and facing uh, Magnus Carlsen, but with the black pieces, uh, what will he do? So e4, Carlsen opens up the game. Uh, we have c5, the Sicilian, and yet again I forgot to uh, lower the volume, so we don't uh, hear double moves, sorry about that. I will try to remember that for the next video. Uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now uh, once again Carlsen goes for bishop to b5. Uh, the Rosolimo attack, or sometimes called the Nejmedinov uh, Rosolimo attack. Uh, we have e6, uh, castles, knight to g to e7, and rook to e1. Uh, a6, bishop to f1, uh, d5, and e captures on d5. And Boris uh, goes knight captures on d5. Uh, you don't want to capture with e. Uh, then this rook is, ca is spinning this knight on e7, and it will be very hard for black to develop here. After d4, captures, 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 captures. Uh, black black will really have a lot of problems how to, how to develop his kingside pieces. So after e captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and d4. Knight to f6 by Boris, bishop to e3, uh, captures, captures, and we have bishop to d7. Uh, Carlsen goes for c4, knight captures on d4, bishop captures on d4, and bishop to c6. So already uh, Gelfand has a very nice position for his bishop here, the dark square bishop is also ready to come into the game, uh, all is well. Uh, knight to c3, bishop to e7, uh, Carlsen plays a3, preparing b4 maybe at some point, so Gelfand stops it, he plays a5. Uh, queen to d3, and we have castles. Now Carlsen connected rooks, so he can develop uh, them. Rook 8 to d1, and uh, queen to c7. Queen to c7, it's uh, it's not all that easy to find uh, an active move here for black. You still have to develop your rooks. Uh, maybe, maybe this rook can at some point be developed via a6, it's hard to tell. Uh, but you definitely want to connect rooks as well. Queen to c7 uh, does make sense, as Carlsen's idea will be something like queen to g3, maybe queen to h3, uh, then bring this uh, bishop from f1 back into the game and and create some sort of an attack against against the black king. So queen to c7 makes sense. If, if queen g3, then Gelfand will definitely trade queens. Uh, first the bishop to e5, attacking the queen, uh, and here queen to b6 was played. Uh, we have queen to g3 now by Carlsen, and uh, of course uh, you have to ask yourselves, uh, can queen capture pawn on b2? So uh, for those of you who are maybe new to chess, maybe you want to pause the video here and uh, try to figure out if this is possible. Uh, I will give it a couple of seconds. As usual, it's not a very hard tactic, but a very nice Sunday tactic. So uh, for those of you who figure out the correct answer, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, trap avoider. Uh, because if queen captures, then of course you see that knight to d5 wins the game immediately. Uh, this opens up the attack from your bishop to the queen, and after you move the queen, then simply knight captures on f6 will win you the game. This comes with check. Uh, you can't capture here, because if you capture, then the queen on a3 is undefended, so you'd have to move your king, and then after knight to h5, uh, well, not immediately of course, uh, but let's say after rook to d3, uh, attacking black's queen after black moves the queen now knight to h5 will 
uh, win you the game easily as there is no defense against queen captures on g7. So uh, after this queen to g3 move by Carlsen, rook f to d8. Uh, we have rook captures on d8, rook captures on d8 and rook to d1. Uh, again attacking elephant's queen. And this is, uh, this is really the moment where you really have to I mean, not you, Gelfand, uh, should have really uh, took, uh, t have taken a lot of time here and figure out what to do. Uh, Gelfand went for one plan and the engine suggests a different plan. But for a human, when you play a practical game, you don't really understand uh, why uh, an engine is suggesting this. The engine suggests queen back to f8. Which, which in the long run will make sense, but you will only uh, realize that uh, probably at the time Gelfand realized it as well. Uh, so Gelfand played the queen to b6. Uh, he wants to infiltrate white's position with the queen. Uh, we have bishop to d4. Carlsen attacks the queen. Queen to b2. Uh, queen to b3, of course, capturing the pawn is, isn't possible due, uh, due to the same idea. Uh, rook to d3, and now queen to c2. Uh, we have b4. A captures on b4, a captures on b4, and now knight to h5, attacking the queen. And here Carlsen plays queen to e5. So he attacks the knight on h5. What do you do here? Uh, here, uh, Gelfand's plan was actually to play rook to a1, but rook to a1 doesn't work due to a very nice tactic. Uh, rook to a1, uh, the idea uh, being that you want to take control of, of the back rank, queen to c1, it will be very hard to stop queen captures on f1, uh, but uh, knight to d1 actually is a beautiful move. This opens up an attack uh, from, from the bishop, uh, to the rook on a1, so after rook captures, rook captures, queen captures, you will have queen to b8 check. And after bishop f8, then you have bishop to c5, and it will be very hard for, for black to do anything here. Uh, queen captures on f8 is coming, you have to create some room for the king after queen captures. King to h7, uh, now uh, of course you would like to capture on f7, but this isn't really possible uh, because black would ga gain the upper hand via bishop to e4 and then bishop to d3 uh, with a similar idea white just did. Uh, but after f3 preventing bishop to e4, uh, it's uh, very hard for black to find a move. f5 as f7 was attacked, uh, now b5 kicking the bishop back and after bishop to d7, uh, queen to b8 not allowing uh, this knight to come into the game and it will be and also attacking the b7 pawn it will be very hard for black to play this so gelfan decides not to go for this uh, idea rook to a1 but still you have to figure out what to do uh, you even if you could you can't really move the knight because of the queen captures on g7 but okay as the position is as it is there's really no way no uh, square for you to move the knight even knight to f6 doesn't really work for you uh, because of uh, b5 uh, you have to push back the bishop because the bishop is attacking e4 uh, and after you move the bishop then knight to e4 is coming and now uh, or even better even better than knight to e4 knight to d5 now knight captures on d5 is impossible because of checkmate on g7 and uh, even if you capture with the pawn then queen captures here will be will be a very deadly idea uh, so after this uh, bishop to d8 move uh, which is after bishop to e8 uh, knight to d5 the only idea here would be bishop to d8 now guarding c7 uh, and also not allowing knight, knight captures on e7 but here uh, here comes knight to c7 and after captures, captures, uh, it will be very hard for black to play this. Uh, you don't want to allow bishop captures on f6, followed by rook to g3. So after this is prevented, queen captures, and uh, these two uh, connected pass pawns will win you the game eventually. Uh, the rook is under attack, so you cannot capture on c4. And after you prevent this, then white will simply start pushing his pawns and win the game. So after this queen to e5 move, uh, we've seen that rook to e1, which was originally played by Gelfand, and knight to f6 don't work. Uh, Gelfand decided to play bishop to f6. It seems like it loses a piece but not really. Uh, Carlsen did play queen captures on h5, bishop captures on d4 was played rook captures and now queen to c3 as the rook is no longer guarding uh, uh, the knight on c3. And uh, here it seems like uh, Gelfand solved all of his problems. He has a beautiful bishop on, on c6, Carlsen has a very passive bishop on f1, although the bishop is very useful guarding the g2 pawn. And also rook to a1 is coming, uh, <laughs> you know, it's very hard to stop this. So in a, in a critical position like this, it's very important to find the best move. So uh, try to pause the video here and uh, try to find the best move in the position, the move Carlsen played. So 
Uh, I will give it a couple of seconds if you decide you want to try and figure out what, what the best move here is. Uh, so for those of you who found it, congratulations. You are you, you really do know how to how to uh, use your Sundays. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show here, Carlson played queen to a5. Uh, queen to a5, of course, with the idea the queen is now attacking the rook. If you capture the queen, of course, rook to d8 will be checkmate after bishop blocks. Uh, so you do have to do something. Best uh, way to retreat the rook is rook to f8. Uh, because on f8, the king will also be guarding the rook. You don't want to play something silly and then allow rook to d8. Uh, queen to b6, now guarding uh, both, both the b-pawn and the rook on d4. Uh, we have e5 and now rook to d1. Uh, g6, Gatefund has to create some space uh, for the king, uh, and here we have b5, simply grabbing more space. Uh, bishop to e4, and now comes queen to f6. Uh, we have h5, creating more room uh, for the king, and now comes h4. Uh, Gatefund wants to activate that, that rook, but it's very hard to do it. Uh, we have bishop to f5, and now rook to d5. And now you see that it, there really is no way for, for you to protect the e5 pawn. Uh, here, queen to c1 was played by Gelfand. Queen to c1 with ideas of, uh, of course, if rook captures, which would be a terrible blunder, uh, then bishop to d3 would easily win you the game. Uh, but, of course, Carlsen did play that. Carlsen played queen captures on e5, but this was Gelfand's idea. He decided to give up one pawn so, uh, to be able to activate his pieces. So, bishop to e6, attacking the rook. Uh, rook to d4, you have to play this. Uh, as both the queen and the bishop are attacking the c4 pawn. Uh, rook to a8, now preparing rook to a1, and queen to e2. And here, king to h7 is played. Uh, the problem with the obvious rook to a1, which seems like a great idea, uh, I do hope all of you can see it, uh, but may maybe it's not so obvious. Uh, feel free, to, again, to, sorry to pause the video here. I mean, it's it, the game contains a lot of nice uh, nice ideas. Uh, why is rook to a1 a terrible move? Try to find the winning idea here for white. So, once again, uh, this is, I believe, the third puzzle uh, in this video. If you solved it, uh, congratulations. This is now, now a complete hat trick. Uh, rook to d8, of course, uh, wins the game. After king to h7, uh, queen to e5 is coming, and there is no defense against rook to, e rook to h8 checkmate. Uh, even if uh, black captures the bishop, of course, you had to see that this uh, you have to give up the bishop. After king moves, uh, queen to g1 check. King moves rook to a3 check. After f3, there's really nothing to do here for black. There are no more checks, and it's impossible to prevent rook to h8. Uh, you do have to consider rook captures uh, if maybe black has some tricks here. But even after king captures, queen f1 check. After king g3, uh, there are no more surprises, and rook to h8 is inevitable. Uh, so, after queen to e2, uh, first king to h7, not allowing rook to d8 to come with check. So now rook to a1 definitely is a threat. Uh, rook to d1 by Carlsen, not allowing it. Uh, queen to c3, and now queen to e4. Uh, we have rook to a1, uh, rook captures, queen captures, and now c5. So, uh, after the rooks have been exchanged, now Carlsen uh, will push his advantage of the extra pawn, and c c6 is coming. So, queen to c3, uh, we have queen captures on b7, and now uh, queen to e1. Uh, if you play queen captures on c5, then b6 is coming, uh, queen is coming to c7, and then this pawn will win the game eventually. Uh, but after queen to b7, we have queen to e1 by Gelfand. Uh, Gelfand is now planning bishop to c4. Uh, but here comes the shocker, b6. Uh, Gelfand does play bishop to c4, and now comes queen to f3, a very important move. Uh, now, if bishop captures on f1, uh, Carlsen had in mind queen captures on f7 with check. Uh, king to h8, and now queen to f4. And it's very interesting that both of these pawns are on dark squares. The queen is also on f4 on dark square, and there are no good discoveries to be made. After bishop to a6 check, let's say, uh, king will simply move, and after queen moves, let's say queen to e8, uh, queen is coming to c7, and now this dark square diagonal is covered. There are no more checks for black, and simply c6 and b7 will win you the game. Uh, so, after this queen to f3, Gelfand played queen captures on f1 with check. Uh, we have king to h2, uh, and here que uh, queen to b1. Uh, b7, and uh, after b7, uh, I believe after b7 it was uh, that Gelfand resigned the game. Yeah, after b7, uh, I will have to check, but I, I believe after b7 he, he resigned the game. 
Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, there's re really nothing to do here. Carlsen will simply push the pawns to victory. Uh, but after, let's say, queen to b5 and c6, uh, queen to d5, no, he didn't resign, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, sorry about that. After b7, uh, queen to b5 was played, uh, Carlson played c6, and now bishop to d5, yeah, I remember, sorry. Gelfan did play this, and uh, only after queen to g3 uh, did Gelfan resign the game. So yeah, uh, of course he resigned that because if bishop captures, then simply you bring uh, the pawn to b8 and you promote to a queen, and really any other move you play uh, results results the same. Simply this, and now white has two queens and it's all over. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. After queen to g3, Gelfand resigned the game. And uh, we do have a nice photo of Gelfand after he resigned. I don't believe, if, I don't know if this is the exact moment he resigned, but I don't think uh, anything pleasant happened at this moment when this photo was taken. So yeah, uh, uh, round 10 was a very eventful round. There were a lot of decisive results, so we will show, I believe, three games for round 10, uh, two more games tomorrow, so, you know, stay tuned. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon with uh, two more videos from round 10 of the 2013 Canvas Tournament. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.